Oh my god, hey! Welcome back to my theatre-themed YouTube channel. My name is Mickey Joe, and I am obsessed with all things theatre. I am also a professional theatre critic, creating reviews of the shows that I have been invited to go and see here on social media. Now, a few weeks ago, I made a video talking about one of the most anticipated productions of this year in London, and honestly, worldwide. I am talking about the new groundbreaking, bold revival of Andrew Lloyd Webber's Sunset Boulevard. This show has been dramatically reconceived by visionary director Jamie Lloyd, it stars Nicole Scherzinger, and it is definitely making waves in the London theatre community. So I made that video talking about the show, but I also said that on Monday nights, the role of Norma Desmond was being played by another West End star in her own right, Rachel Tucker, and that I would be returning to the show to see her in the role, and that I would let you know what my thoughts were. So that is what today's video is. Think of this as a little addendum to my original Sunset Boulevard review. I'm going to briefly recap my thoughts on the show, but if you want to know the exact details of everything I thought about this production and all of the choices made, because it has been a little bit divisive, I think broadly very well received, but with still some naysayers, then you can head back to that original video and go and listen to my many, many thoughts about what they do with the show. But today, predominantly, we are going to be talking about Rachel. So like I said, going to recap my thoughts about the show, going to let you know a little bit of background and context uh, to who Rachel Tucker is as a performer, if you don't know, and then talking about her performance as Norma Desmond and how it compares with Nicole's, because there are similarities and differences. And if you've seen this show, you also know that they play a little bit into acknowledging the actress playing that role. I'm going to talk more about what I mean by that and tell you how that works when Rachel is performing rather than Nicole. I will also be answering the key question, which should you go and see if you're going to see this show for the first time? But before we get into any of that, there is another show that has literally just opened in London that I would love to tell you a little bit more about. So I was recently invited by the Almeida Theatre in Islington to come and see their latest production, a new musical called Cold War. Now, Cold War has been written by Connor McPherson, who you may recognise as the playwright whose script was combined with the music of Bob Dylan to give us the show Girl from the North Country. And this time he's using a combination of Polish folk songs and the music of Elvis Costello to adapt the 2018 film Cold War. For all of you musical theatre fans, the plot of this show lives somewhere in a Venn diagram between musicals like Once and Chess and A Star is Born a little bit. It's intense and stirring and passionate and follows the story of a mesmerising young singer named Zula and a talented but conflicted composer named Victor. Their love story takes them far beyond post-World War II communist era Poland and becomes the story of the show. Now I would describe this show as a musical with a lower case M, there are plenty of songs in it and the songs serve a dramatic purpose, but they are mostly performed within the context of being actual musical performances within the story, while the bulk of the plot and the character development are driven through the very full script. The show also boasts a wonderful cast including Anya Shalotra, Elliot Levy, Luke Thallon and Alex Young. So if Cold War sounds like something that you would be interested in seeing at the Almeida Theatre, click on the link in the description of this video and grab yourself a ticket. Now back to today's video. So now back to Sunset Boulevard. Now if you enjoy this one make sure to subscribe to my theatre themed YouTube channel. There are many more reviews coming very soon. Next year is just as exciting a year for West End theatre. Hopefully I'll be heading back to Broadway at some point. So for all of the London and New York theatre reviews make sure you're subscribed. Also if you have already seen Sunset Boulevard, particularly people who have seen Rachel Tucker and maybe who've also seen Nicole Scherzinger, comment down below with your thoughts about those performances. Also I would love to know if you've seen Rachel Tucker on stage before, when did you first see her on stage? What have you seen her in? And while you let me know that in the comment section down below, I will once again show you a little sneak peek of this show's very bold curtain call.
So for the benefit of those who don't know, Sunset Boulevard is a musical originally written by Andrew Lloyd Webber and Christopher Hampton and Don Black. It's based on the iconic film starring Gloria Swanson and it's about this aging Hollywood actress who used to be the biggest star in cinema who has kind of disappeared and is languishing in this big Sunset Boulevard mansion where she is discovered by a struggling writer named Joe Gillis. She recruits him to help her adapt a sprawling screenplay that she's been working on that would have her returning to the stage playing a teenager in a movie about Salome. He sees an opportunity meanwhile to take advantage of her hospitality because he is living beyond his means basically trying to make it work in Hollywood as many of his peers are similarly. He's also working on a screenplay of his own with a young woman named Betty Schaefer who he's clearly developing feelings for but at the same time Norman Desmond is clearly developing feelings for him. He comes to understand a little bit more about her circumstances and the whole thing carries on. Now this is a show with a sort of an operatic emotional intensity and the original production which was first seen in London and then headed over to Broadway had this enormous staircase and a lot of spectacle and visible grandeur and Norma Desmond had these little spectacle sunglasses and a turban and a funeral for a monkey. There was a car on stage. It was all very lavish, all very grand. And this new production by Jamie Lloyd is incredibly different. Jamie Lloyd is a very bold director. About a decade ago, he was working on a few musicals and really liked playing with different ways of depicting blood. I still remember his productions of Urine Town in the UK and Assassins, also his Evita at Regent's Park. In the years since those, he's kind of moved away from utilising any colour and he's become a lot more minimal and a lot more sort of stark. His productions of Cyrano de Bergerac, which was a very threadbare set and didn't use any kind of prosthetics, which would traditionally be used in that play. It was really just all about the intensity of the dialogue and these microphones, and it featured a lot of handheld microphones. He directed A Doll's House with Jessica Chastain on Broadway that had this one revolve and very dark costumes and chairs and not much by way of set, but this dramatic moment at the end where she exited the stage via the back door and literally walked out onto the street. I also saw his production of The Seagull at the Harold Pinter Theatre here in London, where it was just this sort of bare wooden set and plastic chairs and uh, pretty ordinary dress. It looked as though it was a rehearsal reading and it was kind of very minimally staged. All of this being, to his mind, in service of the text, in really uplifting the words on the page and stripping back everything that would distract from that. And there's a lot of that in his production of Sunset Boulevard. We don't have those grand costumes. The casting of Norma Desmond feels a little different. She's a little younger in this production, which I think makes an interesting and powerful statement, actually. There's very minimal black and white modern costuming, which I have mixed feelings about. And there's very little by way of set pieces, but what we do have is an enormous cinema screen that lowers down onto the stage and displays footage that is being captured in real time via on-stage cameras and occasionally off-stage cameras, which is a whole nother story. Like I said, to hear more about the detail of what this achieves and how he utilizes this, you can head over to my other review, but that gives you a sense of what this production is. To recap my thoughts about this, I think that this is a really exciting and really groundbreaking revival of the show. I was reading a line the other day that said like, rarely does theatre feel so alive and it does have this vitality and this intensity to it. I know not everyone is always on board with a very bold, very reimagined revival. You know, the recent revival of Oklahoma that started on Broadway and came over here. Uh, proved divisive. Not everyone liked that. People like sometimes a more traditional version of the show. But my whole thing is there's going to be another Oklahoma in five minutes time. There will eventually be another Sunset Boulevard. This is not irreparably changing the material or suggesting that this is the new way that this show should be produced. And so I like a big swing. I like when a creative team has really looked at this material 
and thought, what can we pull out of this? What can we uplift here? And I don't think every single choice that Jamie Lloyd and his team have made here service every single line of dialogue. I think the whole section about the funeral for the monkey where he just delivers it and we don't have any visual to hang this on falls a little flat and is one of the few moments that can be very confusing to people who aren't familiar with the source material. I think in general, this show plays better to people who already know at the very least the plot of the show if they haven't seen a previous production. But a criticism I have heard is that people who don't know the show struggle with the storytelling to infer it. And I, do, I, I, I look at this and I feel as though the storytelling is clear, but I, I can't share that perspective because I had seen the show before, so I knew what was happening. Equally, like I said in that other review, there are moments in the second act where we have these visual gags while Joe and Betty are walking backstage. I have changed my mind about one of them because I said I didn't like the, the, the couple of ensemble members who are kissing in the background and then the person who is like snorting coke while Betty is talking about her backstory. The second one I am still against because it still steps on the important lines of dialogue where she's talking about her history in Hollywood, but the couple who are kissing, there's an interesting through line here and Jamie Lloyd attention to detail is insane like no other director I have known because the couple who are kissing, one of them is the ensemble member who plays an actress and throughout all of those like Hollywood dialogue scenes, you have one at the beginning and then another one at the end of act one. She talks about being a struggling actress and she has this throwaway line about saying you only like find success in this town if you say yes when you really mean no. And she's talking about like sexual exploitation within Hollywood. So the fact that you then see her in this romantic entanglement is kind of a continuation of that and you don't know whether it's a completely consensual thing. Like, this thing that just looks like a throwaway kiss moment, I'm telling you, happens there at that point because Joe and Betty are talking about Hollywood, talking about sort of like the, the this ideal of it and then the realities of it at the same time. So that's just reminding us of another factor of what Hollywood is like. The same with the person doing drugs, although I do think that the exact timing of that, again, steps on Betty's dialogue. But in general, this is a show that is about cinema, and so using a cinema screen and using cameras as the means of storytelling here, I think is appropriate to this show. I think it's genius, in fact. I don't think it works for everything. I think it can be alienating as often as it can be effective. And Jamie Lloyd did not invent this. Ivo Van Hove is another director who has utilised this a lot. He's actually opening another show next year in the West End called Opening Night, starring Sheridan Smith at the Good, where I dare say there will be more cameras on stage. But in Sunset Boulevard, I think more often than not, the bold choices that are made really do pay off. So that was a recap of my thoughts and how some of them have kind of shifted since my first time seeing the show. Let me tell you now about the guest star playing Norma Desmond at select performances, Rachel Tucker. So Rachel first came to industry-wide prominence as the fourth place contestant on the TV series I'd Do Anything, which was searching for the next star who would play Nancy in a revival of the musical Oliver, being overseen and produced by Andrew Lloyd Webber. Rachel made a big impression on that series with her huge belty voice. I remember personally being devastated the week that she got eliminated, but she was in fantastic company. The final three in that show were Samantha Barks, Jesse Buckley, and Jodie Prenger, who went on to win. But like many of the contestants on those shows, Rachel Tucker had worked professionally before. I have an old program that seems to suggest I saw her in the UK tour of Rod Stewart's Tonight's The Night, the musical. And very soon after she was on that program, she went on to star in We Will Rock You, and then subsequently played Elphaba in Wicked in London. This would be the start of a big relationship with that show because she would go back into Wicked in London for an anniversary year. She also went over to Broadway and started Wicked over there. In fact, last time I checked, which was early October, she is still on the promotional images outside of the Gershwin Theatre on Broadway. Big old green Rachel Tucker 
face as Elphaba. Following this, she worked a lot internationally. She played Beverly Bass in both the original West End cast and then subsequently joining the Broadway cast of Come From Away. She was also in Sting's musical, The Last Ship. I had the pleasure of seeing her in a very intimate production of the musical John and Jen at Southwark Playhouse as we were re-emerging from the pandemic. She was also in a fantastic concert production of Songs for a New World. And those last two shows were where I really started to appreciate her ability and skill as an actress. Because we've always known her to be a phenomenal vocalist, but I do think she is a really underrated actress as well. What she also has is this incredible power. I never got to see her in the concert version of the musical The Pirate Queen, but I did get to go to a press rehearsal of the show and she sang the song Woman. And I will forever remember, there's a clip of this in my little outro at the end of all of my videos of her singing this big long section of the song and she throws her script down because she knows that she knows the last few lines of the song. She's just phenomenal and to be in such proximity to that voice and the intensity of her delivery and acting through song. It's incredible, it's, it's quite remarkable. Which makes her a great fit to be appearing as Norma Desmond in select performances of Sunset Boulevard. Let me explain a little bit more about what I mean by that. So obviously Nicole Scherzinger is the principal performer in this revival, but Nicole does not perform on Monday nights. On Monday nights, Rachel Tucker is assuming the role. However, and this hasn't been widely publicized, but it is the truth, Ellen, Rachel is also the first cover. Now, Lara Denning is also in the cast as the standby for Norma Desmond, but up until a certain time in the day, Rachel has first refusal if she wants to go on uh, due to the indisposition of Nicole Scherzinger, who it must be said has not missed... I think really any performances other than pre-scheduled absences, some of which were announced a little bit more last minute. Um, but it seems as though I don't think she's been missing performances really. But I actually got to see Rachel performing on a Saturday matinee because they had announced uh, with quite short notice a few shows that Nicole wasn't going to be doing that week. So after a lot of context, here is the part of the video that you have been waiting for. What is Rachel like in the role compared with Nicole? So I will say first and foremost, she's giving a fantastic performance in this show. She is formidable. She is of course vocally astonishing, like her performances of With One Look and largely as if we never said goodbye. That one in particular, she really knocks out of the park. And that moment where Joe says to her, it's all on you now, good luck, and then leaves her alone on stage. And then the spotlight hits her and there's that big swell in the orchestra and then she just hammers this song. Like, if there's one thing Rachel Tucker is going to do, she is going to belt to the absolute rafters, and few songs give you the opportunity to do this in the middle, like those big notes in As If We Never Said Goodbye. Lloyd Webber is good for this, generally, but that bit that's like, I've come home, and then it's so long and sustained, I have a horrible cold right now, and on my best day, I sound nothing like Rachel Tucker or Nicole Scherzinger, but it was thrilling, it was so good. And what makes it even even better than just how it sounds is the attack that she delivers those songs with. She obliterates this music and she is just so strong in the role, which I think is a double-edged sword. Because Nicole does this as well. I talked about this in my other review. Nicole has this animalistic intensity thing where you can see all of the veins popping up and she's running and sprinting across the stage and just fully committing to it. Rachel is giving you that same level of commitment, but she is just so powerful and feisty and strong that it almost masks the requisite vulnerability just a little bit, specifically at the beginning. The way that she ends the show and that kind of intensity, perfect, just wonderful. But when she's first receiving Joe, she's so authoritative, but without the sense of her own precariousness, it almost feels like she could just be living in that house and she doesn't need Max there to shelter and protect and take care of her. Like she feels fine. She feels almost a little bit too robust as Norma. And so the moment where we see her with bandages on her wrists and she's talking about her insecurities, that comes as a little bit of a jump. 
All of this because I just don't think she's playing mad and manic in quite the same way that Nicole is. I think she's playing this hunger and this desperation. I don't get entirely the madness of it all. And I think that is largely because she is just so strong in her characterization and so forceful. It does mean that scene that she has with DeMille in the second act um, either after or just before she sings, as if we never said goodbye, you feel as though he really doesn't stand a chance against her. With Nicole, it feels as though he's entertaining her and he never has any will to actually produce the film, even though she thinks that's what the meeting is about. With Rachel, you feel as though if they were to keep talking, he would end up having to produce this film because he's just not winning this conversation. Now I saw her opposite Tom Francis as Joe. The passion and the connection between the two of them, I really believed. I thought she was playing that lust and the sort of predatory thing very, very well, almost better perhaps. And she does feel more like a real person. You have those early moments when she's doing the whole Salome thing and we have those close up camera shots. There are a lot of moments where Nicole is mugging and pulling these crazy faces and getting laughs occasionally and being a little bit comic in how wide eyed and ridiculous she looks. Rachel, is definitely still like playing that to the camera, but it's not quite as comical. It's not quite as clownish. And I think what that does is ground her in just a little bit more reality. Whether that's what the production wants or not, I don't know, but I think that is a component of her performance. Now there is a wonderful actress and the most sensational dancer who plays young Norma Desmond, who looks a lot more like Nicole than she does like Rachel. So we have this moment where they are cutting between close-ups of the two. This doesn't work as well when it's Rachel as it does when it's Nicole. The other thing I wanna talk about is the references they make to them as actual actresses. And these are some spoilers for what happens at the start of the second act, but we have this whole sequence during the on track of the show where a camera is going around backstage and projecting what's happening. And we see David Thaxton as Max in his dressing room staring at a Pussycat Dolls poster when it's Nicole. Now, when it's a Rachel show, he's looking at a picture of her as Elphaba in Wicked, her most well-known role to a West End audience. Nicole also spoofs some of her own Pussycat Dolls choreography, and I had read online that Rachel kind of does some Elphaba Wicked choreography, some of that stuff. I didn't pick up on that. I didn't notice it. Again, I think a lot of what she does physically is subtler, which brings me to talking about the choreography in general because Nicole Scherzinger is also a very talented dancer who can slide down into the splits and kick her legs over her head and roll around on the floor. And Rachel aims for a lot of the same things, but doesn't necessarily have the same dance tools at her fingertips. What she gives is a wholeheartedly committed performance. It just feels like choreography that's been adapted to her a little bit. And this is one of my big bullet points here is I wish more was added in for the Rachel Tucker nights rather than having her do the Nicole Scherzinger version of the track about 75% as capably. Not because she's a lesser actress, a lesser singer or any of those things, just because it has been so clearly designed for Nicole Scherzinger's specific skill set. This role in this production really has been built around her. And so Rachel is entering and trying to recreate something that has not been made for her. She is a square peg in a round hole in that sense. But she is so talented in her own right that you could add in more that plays to her skill set. You could make it a Rachel Tucker version of the role rather than just have her try and do Nicole as best she can. None of which is to say that she is in any way disappointing in the role. Like I said, it's a really strong and powerful performance but she is doing Nicole's version of it. With commitment, with passion, with fire intensity, with powerhouse vocals, and with this formidably commanding stage presence. So for the last few weeks of the run, would I advise people go and see a Nicole Scherzinger show or a Rachel Tucker show? And I think just based on the way that it's been built, I think you would need to see it with Nicole to see it as it has been 
conceived because like I said it's adapted to Rachel on a Monday night but it's clearly been built around Nicole as a concept. It also and my friend Catherine Quinn made a great point about this the other day there is something to the idea of it being this former pop star playing this former movie star and it's kind of spoofing a little bit of her real life persona that's why the Pussycat Dolls references are in the show because it's playing on that idea. Jamie Lloyd loves to do celebrity casting that subverts their own celebrity in some way whereas Rachel Tucker is just a really strong brilliant star of an actress at the top of her game going from success to success so it doesn't quite hit in the same way. That being said if you have already seen this show with Nicole I encourage you to go back and go and see a Rachel Tucker show. The ticket prices being what they are her being less of a mainstream name. The Nicole are a little bit lower on a Monday night, so if you're finding that this production is a little less affordable, go see it on a Monday night with Rachel Tucker. You will not be disappointed. You are getting a great show either way. But those have been my thoughts about her in the role. If anyone has any more questions about Sunset Boulevard, do I think it's going to Broadway? What do I think the casting will look like when it gets there? Let me know in the comments section down below and I will do my best to answer. For now, I hope that you have enjoyed this video. Like I said, if you saw Rachel Tucker in this show, particularly if you saw Rachel and Nicole, let us know in the comments what you thought of those performances and tell us when you've seen Rachel Tucker on stage before. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that you enjoyed. If you did, make sure to subscribe to my theatre themed YouTube channel for many more videos coming very soon. I hope that everyone is staying safe and that you have a stagey day. For 10 more seconds. I'm Mickey Joe Theatre. Oh my god, hey. Thanks for watching. Have a stagey day. Subscribe! <laughs>